Welcome back to Jack Fleming Artistry. This is just a quick video here today showing some license plates that I recently restored or refinished. Actually, I wouldn't call these a restoration plate. They still have some texture to them. We sandblasted these ones and painted them. I send out to some friends of mine to do that. One of them sandblasts them. The other one sprays them with automotive paint for me, and then I come back and brush letter them. Get a few questions about plates or redoing plates from time to time, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to just answer a few of those questions. The first question that I get sometimes is, can people ship them to me and have me redo them? The answer to that is yes. <laughs> I do that frequently. I do um, redo these. It takes a little bit of time because, like I said, a lot of times I have to send them to a friend of mine to get them sandblasted, then another friend to get, like for this one, the white painted. Uh, there is a little bit of turnaround and then I usually after I'm done painting them like to wait about two days before I ship them out just so that the paint has a little bit of time to harden. But that is something that we do and do I would say somewhat frequently. Like another question that I often get is what kind of paint am I using on these? Um, the paint that I'm using to letter this is one shot uh, sign painters enamel and I like to use a little bit of hardener. Um, it helps the paint bite just a little bit more. My understanding is it also helps it be a little bit more durable and a little bit glossier. I have had the question before too of what hardener I use. I actually use hardener that I get from Tractor Supply whenever I'm using hardener with my uh, with my one-shot lettering enamel here. Unless I'm working with somebody else and the one-shot is going to be put underneath clear, in that case, I like to use the same hardener that they're using for the clear. I also get a question frequently from people asking how hard is it for them to do this themselves. Uh, as I said, I don't spray and I don't sandblast, so that part for me is kind of hard, I guess, mostly because I don't have the equipment, so I send that out to somebody else. Um, painting the letters like this, for me, I paint with a brush every day using the same paints, so it doesn't seem very hard to me. It's just a matter of time and patience. But if you don't have that same skill, I know other people that have sat here and tried and tried and tried, and they just haven't built up the brush control. And it ends up being a struggle for them, and they get frustrated. Sometimes those people send me plates to do for them. One of the most frequent questions that I get asked is what brushes am I using? Um, for this right here, I believe this is a size four, if I remember correctly, um, Mac Series 169 brushes. It's the brushes that I use the most for lettering. Just really comfortable with them. I like the way that they turn and I like the chisel that I can get out of them to put up into the little corners and stuff of the letters and numbers. Later on in the video, you'll see that I will use a sword striping brush I don't remember on this one which brand i used most of them are all made by mac anyhow um, but i use that for the line that goes around the outside of the plates and for the little numbers on there again still using a mac series 169 just using a smaller one either a zero or a size two usually I often get people who ask me why I don't use a brayer or some people call it an ink roller um, to roll paint over the letters and then come back and clean it with a q-tip. I've just found for me that I'm faster at it with the brush between all the prep time of getting the paint on the brayer and getting it the right consistency and then rolling over it. Sometimes the plates aren't you know perfectly flat and I have issues and stuff with that and then coming back and cleaning up with the q-tip especially using like an orange like this on a white, even cleaning it up with the Q-tip, you know, and putting solvent on the Q-tip. Sometimes there's a little bit of staining and stuff that comes. Oranges and reds stain white quite a bit. So again, for me, this is the quickest way that I've found for me to go about doing this. There are a lot of other ways out there that people go about repainting license plates. I get asked about price a lot, which if anybody's interested in getting this done, that's probably going to be one of your number one questions. I try to keep this as affordable as I possibly can for my customers, mostly because I love the fact that you can run vintage plates here in Texas and in a lot of other states. Um, with that said, I actually charge a very minimal price for my labor and my materials on it, and then I don't do any kind of markup 
you know, from the sandblast and then the painting that I have done from some friends of mine. So it's as affordable as I can possibly make it. I'm not going to discuss price on here, but if you guys are curious, give me a call or send me a message. Talk about that privately. A lot of it too depends on the condition of the plates. Sometimes I have to go through and work the metal on these so that the numbers show back up because maybe they got flattened or I had a pair that actually got folded before and I unfolded those. Charged by the hour on labor for that. I would say the thing to do is just know what your labor is worth. Hope that answers any questions that people might have or at least some of the most frequently asked ones. Uh, again, if you guys are interested in having me do plates for you, shoot me a message. Glad to do it. It is a little bit of a turnaround um, on time just because, again, I'm working with two other parties on getting that done and squeezing them in in between other jobs. But it is a service that I'm extremely happy to provide and really enjoy doing. So if y'all have any other questions on these, leave them in the comments. Other people can answer questions if you do that. And then on top of that, I come back, I read the comments, and I'll either answer them there or maybe in a future video. Y'all have a good day. If you paint, keep those brushes wet. If you're out there wrenching on cars and stuff, awesome. <laughs> I love it. Uh, talk to you guys later and have a good day.